Today on Bridge City News, it's day five of the CN rail strike with premiers, farmers and other industries urging the federal government to take more direct action to get the rail lines moving again. Lethbridge police are being tight-lipped but confirm that five Lethbridge College students have been charged with sexual assault. And a 13-year-old boy has been arrested and a gun seized after threatening to shoot other students and staff yesterday at his Los Angeles area middle school. Your nation. Your province. Your Southern Alberta. From the heart of Lethbridge, it's Bridge City News with Paul Arthur. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Lethbridge police have confirmed recent rumors that five Lethbridge College students have been charged with sexual assault. The names of the students have not been released publicly to protect the identity of the alleged victim. And because one of the students facing charges is under 18, police say the investigation began earlier this month after information about the alleged incident began circulating on social media. At this point, Lethbridge College officials are only saying that an internal investigation is underway. Social media sources say the students charged have been suspended or expelled. However, the college has not confirmed that. Tabor Warner Karsten MLA Grant Hunter, the Associate Minister of Red Tape Reduction, spoke to business leaders in Lethbridge yesterday. He admitted that his department has been overwhelmed with thousands of requests and is not moving as smoothly and efficiently as first hoped. Hunter explained that the majority of complaints fall into one of four categories, Alberta Environment, the Energy Regulator, the Utilities Commission and Labor. It will take some time to sort out, but he is determined to reduce regulatory burdens. This government is completely focused on making sure that we reduce regulatory burden. We're going to reduce regulatory burden by at least one third uh, over the next four years. We're going to make sure that Alberta is the freest and fastest growing economy in North America. Uh, this is where we're going to get to and this is going to help Albertans get back to work and that's really why we're doing this. Get, bring that foreign investment and free up our investors here in Alberta so that we can have lots of job opportunities for everyday Albertans. Alberta Health Services is hoping their thought-provoking Opioids Don't Discriminate exhibit, which ran yesterday and today at the downtown Lethbridge Transit Terminal, will bring some understanding as to how the opioid crisis impacts many people from different backgrounds. Uh, I think with everything going on in Lethbridge right now, this exhibit is incredibly timely in that it's not just about educating about what opioids are. We have a lot of that information. It has that in there, but it also tells some stories and makes it very personal and gives people the tools they need if they're, if they're trying to ask for help uh, or if they're wanting to give help to people. You can walk through Max, David, and Natasha's footsteps, see what happened to them, and learn through their experiences. So it's a very interactive exhibit. So what you do is, as you go into the room, you will see signs that say, you are David, you are Max, you are Natasha. Uh, you choose one of those, and you actually have a little stone that you put in your shoe. Um, and as you have that stone in your shoe, you'll be told to do different things with it throughout the exhibit. Ways to relieve that pain, ways to ignore that pain, or what you're supposed to do to really get you into the mindset of what's going on with these characters. The Rehoboth Ministry's annual breakfast and Christmas craft and poinsettia sale took place this morning at their Coaldale facilities. The beautiful flowers and crafts raise funds to help expand the services provided for adults living with disabilities. So today we have our big pancake breakfast, Christmas craft sale, poinsettia sale, children's craft fundraiser. The fundraising, the pancake breakfast is put on by our auxiliary and it's a wonderful group of people that get together and uh, serve delicious pancakes and the money that is generated through the uh, pancake breakfast goes into um, the Coldell program and the Lethbridge program. Uh, right now we're focused on putting together or building a sensory park. So all the crafts that you see in the storefront, um, we have the individuals that we're serving, they volunteer their time to create these beautiful, beautiful crafts. An Alberta Legislature Committee has voted 8-2 to two, preventing a private member's bill from going to second reading that would have protected health care providers from being sued or sanctioned if they refuse to provide a service that violates their conscience, such as abortion or assisted suicide. Currently, Alberta doctors who don't want to perform those procedures must refer patients to someone who will. The Alberta Legislative Assembly as a whole could still vote to override the committee's recommendation and allow Bill 207 to go for second reading.
The new Brunswick government has invoked the notwithstanding clause to shield reintroduced vaccination legislation against charter challenges. Education Minister Dominic Carty says the law would make vaccinations mandatory for children in schools and daycares unless they have a medical exemption. Carty acknowledges the notwithstanding clause is rarely used, but he says the province is prepared to use every power it has to ensure schools and daycares are safe for children. Opponents to this move cite concerns over parental rights and charter rights to freedom of choice. Farmers, premiers and various industries are calling on the federal government to bring an end to the CN rail strike, now in its fifth day. But Transport Minister Mark Garneau says back-to-work legislation would actually take longer, and Ottawa is encouraging both sides to keep talking. The railway is calling on the union to enter into binding arbitration with an arbitrator chosen by the parties or appointed by the federal government. We are encouraging both sides to keep talking. We believe this is the best way to do it and, uh, and the quickest way to do it. CN has indicated that uh, it can, within the scope of its operations, where it can operate using its managers yes. who can, uh, can be conductors of trains, that it will try to help where it can. We are keeping the channels of communication completely open, looking at all possible sources of supply of, uh, of uh, propane to, uh, to address the, the issues uh, with respect to uh, the agricultural sector, also the, the, um, uh, the chicken uh, sector, uh, and also uh, hospitals and, uh, and residences. So looking for every possible source of propane, but at the same time, we are focused very, very strongly on resolving this, uh, this dispute between uh, CN and the Teamsters. Garneau says there are now 100 rail cars of propane on their way from Edmonton to Quebec to help alleviate the shortage. Canada's defense minister says he doesn't see China as an adversary, as an international security conference prepares to focus heavily on the Asian superpower during its weekend gathering in Halifax. However, Halifax International Security Forum President Peter Van Prague says he thinks it's clear that Canada and China do not share the same interests. We don't consider uh, China as an adversary, but you can't at the same time look at it and ans have this discussion as one in one package. We have uh, uh, good cooperation on certain parts of trade, but we also have challenges in some areas and significant challenges uh, in another. And uh, one thing that has strained our relationship is the arbitrary detention of, of our, two, our, our two Canadians. Um, but this is a time for us to be able to work together uh, and to be able to come up with those solutions. Some of the things that uh, China, from a, a security perspective, um, has been doing has been concern is, is concerning. And we need to be mindful of that. Competitor, strategic competitor, competitor, adversary. The message that I think we're hearing in advance of the, of the forum is that it is time to recognize that China has a different worldview and to measure as accurately as, as we can what its ambitions are so that we can be properly prepared. There's a shakeup with Conservative leader Andrew Scheer's staff, but it's not yet clear why. He dismissed two top staff today in the wake of the October election loss. Scheer has announced that Chief of Staff Marc-Andre Leclerc and Communications Director Brock Harrison have been let go immediately. Martin Bellinger and Simon Jeffries will act as Interim Chief of Staff and Director of Communications. Scheer did not explain the reasons for the dismissals, but they do come as the party struggles with whether he can win the next election. A 13-year-old boy was arrested and a rifle seized after the teen threatened to shoot other students and staff yesterday at his Los Angeles area middle school. Authorities are crediting alert teachers and students for preventing a mass shooting. On Thursday, November 21st, 2019, LSD Sentry personnel were informed of a school shooting threat against students at a South Los Angeles school known as Animo May Jemison Charter Middle School. The threat alleged a student was going to shoot other students at the school on Friday, November 22nd, today. Multiple students overheard the school threat on campus and teachers emailed the administration about concerns raised by the students. School officials contact the sheriff's department immediately. A deputies immediately initiated an investigation and conducted interviews to gather more inf details. Uh, they developed information that led them to the subject, a 13-year-old male who allegedly made the threat. Station detectives were contacted and a thorough investigation 
was conducted, the subject address was determined and was located, and a search warrants were authored for the residence. During the execution of the search warrant, a rifle with a high capacity magazine was seized along with ammunition. In addition, this investigation led detectives to identify the subject also had in his possession a rudimentary hand-drawn map of the school as well as a list containing names of both students and staff members from the school. With all incidents like these, we ask all Los Angeles County residents that if they see or hear something to say something. In this case, the fact that people stepped forward and said what they, what they had heard led to us to be able to prevent a tragedy today. Recapping one of our top news stories, farmers, premiers and various industries are calling on the federal government to bring an end to the CN rail strike now in its fifth day. But Transport Minister Mark Garneau is sticking to his guns, encouraging both sides to keep negotiating. And a look at weekend weather, partly cloudy tonight with a gusty west wind dipping down to a low of plus three. Tomorrow, increasing cloudiness with a 30% chance of afternoon showers and a high of six with a west wind gusting from 40 to 60. Depression and anxiety are common struggles in today's society. Hal Roberts sat down with best-selling author and psychologist Dr. Greg Jantz to look at ways to deal with these challenges. That is coming right up. But first, here's a look at what's happening in and around your community. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. Come to the Mika Yuko Japanese Garden on Friday, November 29th, as they kick off the season with their Winter Light Festival, which will run until January 31st. On that evening, the gates will open at 6 p.m. with greetings from sponsors and dignitaries at 7. Admission is $9 for adults. Admission is $9 for adults, $7 for kids ages 6 to 15, and ticket packages, which include food and drinks, are also available. For more information, visit MikaYuko.com. It's the 28th annual Mayor's Christmas Concert on Saturday, December 7th at South Minster United Church, beginning at 7 p.m. Enjoy your favorite Christmas carols performed by the Lethbridge Community Silver and Gold Bands with special guests, Nicole Agnes Davidson Senior and Junior Choirs. Come take part in this annual tradition and bring along a donation in support of the Lethbridge Food Bank and Interfaith Food Bank's Christmas Hope Campaign. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit lcbs.yapcity.com. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar. 